Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to speak to you today about the arms trade. I would like to start with a disconcerting fact. The arms trade has seen significant growth lately. The sector has grown by nearly a quarter over the last four years. More and more weapons are sold as countries and private individuals seek to protect themselves. The arms trade is dominated by a small number of exporting countries. The country at the top of the list is the United States. In second place stands Russia, followed by Germany, France, the UK and China. An interesting point to make here is that out of the top six arms exporters in the world, five are permanent members of the United Nations Security Council. But what about the countries that import these weapons? Who are the main buyers? Well, officially, the world's biggest arms importer is India. India's economy is growing at a fast pace, and it wants to ensure that this growth is, ac is accompanied by military clout. China is also ensuring that it is not being left behind in this arms race. But, as I mentioned earlier, China has a large weapons industry on its own soil, and therefore does not need to rely on imports to such a large degree. So it seems that emerging countries are ensuring that their newfound wealth is safely defended. The figures we have available on the arms trade can tell us a great deal, but official figures do not accurately reflect the real global arms trade, because they rarely, they rarely take into account a legal weapons trade. In the illicit arms trade, the main category of weapons sold is so-called small weapons. A widely accepted definition of this category is a weapon that an individual soldier can carry. Small weapons are easier to hide, meaning that they can be smuggled and transported without great difficulty. This also means that they are harder to trace. Therefore, it is difficult to get an exact picture of where small arms are bought and sold around the world. However, the fact that they are small does not mean they are any less deadly. In the Democratic Republic of Congo, 4 million people died in the war that took place between 1998 and 2003. There were practically no large weapons used in this conflict. One example of a particularly deadly weapon which falls into the category of small arms is the AK-47, or Kalashnikov. This rifle is popular because of its reliability and durability. The AK-47 was originally produced in the Soviet Union, but after the collapse of the USSR, a large number of AK-47s flooded the market. Many of them ended up in Africa, where they can still be found today. This abundant supply means that prices are sometimes very low. In countries like Somalia, Rwanda, Mozambique and Tanzania, prices can be as low as 30 to 40 US dollars. The average price in the rest of the world is about 600 dollars or above. The overabundance of small arms around the world is a real hindrance to peace. Each year, 500,000 people around the world are killed by small weapons. So, how are our governments addressing this issue? Are measures being put in place to curb the spread of small arms? Well, it must be said that there is not much progress to boast about in this area. Only one small weapon has been banned internationally, anti-personnel landmines. However, many countries have still not signed the Ottawa Treaty, such as the United States. So, ladies and gentlemen, when looking at the arms trade around the world, the overall picture we get is quite grim. Although a reduction in arms sales took place in the 1990s, certain countries are increasing their stockpiles of weapons today. The trade in small arms is particularly worrying because of the deaths it brings about and the difficulties in regulating this market. Thank you.